Hello everyone, hope you are learning well. So in this video, we'll discuss the third problem of lead code by weekly contest 110. Uh, so today I joined the contest very late and I had only 15 minutes to <laughs> attempt the contest. So this was the only problem that I was able to solve in 15 minutes. This was because the accuracy was on the lower side. So I thought, uh, let's attempt it. Uh, so yeah, let's see what this problem is asking us to do. But to be really honest, uh, seeing the accuracy, I personally don't think that this, this problem is um you know as tough as uh it is shown by the accuracy let's see what the problem is asking us to do right so the problem name is minimum seconds to equalize a circular array okay so it says that you are given a zero indexed array nums containing n integers okay now at each second you can perform the following operation on the array what is that operation for every index i in the range this that means choose any index okay replace nums of i with either nums of i nums of i minus 1 plus n mod n and nums of i plus 1 mod n what does this mean simple if you are standing here so you can replace this element either with this element or element on the left or element on the right right but if you are standing here that means if you are standing at the first element right so what will be the previous element for the first element this last element and what will be the next element for the last element it will be the first element means it's a circular array simple right so that is why it is saying i minus 1 plus n because if you're standing at 0 uh, so this is index n minus 1 so you do 0 minus 1 plus n that becomes n minus 1 that's it and why this condition suppose you are standing at n minus 1 so after this the next index will be plus 1 but maybe you have got out, gone out of bound you take mod eh? so what happens these this this cancels out and you move to index number 0 simple this is how a circular array looks like right this is how the indexing works so that is what the problem is asking us to do at every step what you can do you can choose an element and replace it with that element itself or the element on its left or the element on its right simple right note that all the elements get replaced simultaneously return the minimum number of seconds needed to make all the elements in the array equal right so let's see let's look into one of the examples and this problem will become very easy okay <clears throat> just see so this is my array one two one two so it says that we can equalize the array in one second how at the first second replace value at each index with now just see there are multiple ways to do it but let's see one of the ways right what you do you can replace this guy with either this or two or this two right next element or previous element okay so what will happen if you replace this element what will happen initially you have one two one two you can replace it and you can form a two here also okay by either using this two or this two great what about the second index right now for the second index what we can do is we can just replace it with the same element i mean do not change this element simple right so it remains as two what about this guy now this guy can again can can be replaced with either the next element or the previous element remember my target is to make all the elements equal right so i do this for all the elements at one instant I can choose different options like for example for one index I can choose that okay I'll pick up the next index to be uh, uh, to, to basically uh, replace my value for example for this particular index I can choose the next element to be replaced but for this particular index I can choose the previous element to be replaced for this particular index I can consider it that I'll not replace it but you have to do, do this operation you have to choose one option out of the three options same element previous element next element right then only one step will be counted so that's what we are doing here so we started with one two one two you can replace this with this two it becomes two two one two so this is for this index for the second index what do you do you you don't change it right for the third index again pick up the next element so it becomes two all the elements are equal in one second right you can do you can change all the values in one as well right one two one two so what do you do make it at as it is don't change it this guy becomes equal to this so one one this remains as one and this guy again remains uh, you know gets replaced by the previous element one 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 but in the end both the you know options are taking one step only right 
uh, let's see this example so this one is 2 1 3 3 2 right so let's check all the feasible options right so just see this is 1 right what are the options I can make all the elements as 1 okay if I do that so let's make the problem simple let me see how many steps are uh, do I take to make all the elements as 1 all the elements as 2 and all the elements as 3 right so let's check for 1 so in one step what I can do this one can change this guy and this guy right simple because this can choose the next element and this can choose the previous element right this is one step right and you can you know either change the remaining elements or make it as it is don't worry so this becomes one 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 getting it and this is three two great now at the next instant what i can do is this three can be changed by this one and this two can be changed by this one so that means after two steps all the numbers are changed to one great now let's try to change all the numbers to two i start with two one three three two okay if i want to change all the numbers by two so after one second in the best case what happens this is two this guy becomes two because of this so two two okay this remains as two and this guy becomes two because of this so this is as it is three two two and at the next step this guy becomes two because of any of these right so after two steps i can make all the elements equals to two as well let's check for three so it is two one three three two after one step this goes here this goes here so two three 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 similarly this guy becomes three after one after the second step so what i mean to say this is what the problem is asking us to do right find the minimum number of steps so you can change the uh, you can change all the elements in this case either to one or two or three all of them will just take two steps uh, what about this one all the elements are equal no steps needed right now the constraints are the number of elements that I can have is 10 to the power 5 and then each value can be 10 to the power 9, right? So now, as I sh as we have just seen, right, the brute force approach, we'll just apply it. We'll just apply it optimally, right? Because forget about any logic. What's the brute force approach? Brute force approach says that pick up all the distinct values in the array. Like in this case, you have 1, 2 and 3. And let's see what is the minimum number of steps I take to change all the elements to 1. To all the, all the elements to 2 and all the elements to 3. Whatever is the number of steps, uh, you know, individual steps, I'll take the minimum of them and that will be my answer, right? Obviously, if I have n uh, elements as 1, 2, 3, I'll not change them to 4, right? That is not possible. So, you just have to consider the sample space of distinct numbers, right? Great. Now, what we will do here, how we'll optimize it, just see. This will also tell us that how to approach these type of problems, right? The number of elements is 10 raised to the power 5. Each element can be 10 raised to the power 9. Now, I cannot do something like that. That I pick the first element and I run a loop to check for all the elements. Now, that, that will time out. That will be 10 raised to the power 10. Okay. What can I do in this case? Right. What can I do? So, just see here. Suppose I keep a track. Let's see whether this works or not. Suppose I want to keep a track that, okay, uh, where all, at what indices do I have a value 1? <clears throat> right do at all what indices i have a value one okay at how many indices at how uh, at how many indices do i have a value two right basically i'll kick i'll create a map of indices where the key will be a particular value in the array and value will be a list of indices where that value has come right so what will happen the sum of these values is actually the number of elements right simple now let's see why this will work or why we have come to this right let's see that <clears throat> okay so i create a map like this three and so on right i'll have a list of indices right now what is happening here just see this is my array suppose i'm talking about where all do i have one so suppose i have a one here and i have a one here just taking an example right so what happens after one second after one second this guy can cover a distance of one in both the directions this guy is capable of changing this and this similarly this guy is capable of changing this guy and this guy getting it after one second now after at the second second what will happen this actually after after the end of first second this has become one this has become one this has become one this has become one now what will happen at the second moment at the second step 
this guy is again capable of changing it to one and so on right so what i mean to say i started with this right i started with this that i had a one here and a one here now how many elements were there how many positions were there between these two indices which i wanted to change one two three getting it i am saying between two adjacent between two adjacent ones how many positions were there which i wanted to change it will be suppose this was index i this was index j so this will be j minus i j minus i so suppose this is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 so 1 2 3 elements are there between index 1 and index 5 so it will be 5 minus 1 minus 1 that is 3 so j minus i minus 1 this is the number of indices i have right now how many seconds will i take to make all of them equals to one in this case right it will be just see how many numbers do i need to change suppose i need to change x numbers and i have two candidates to change it so i'll take x by two time right y x by two time these are x positions right at one step i'm changing it from here and from here 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 getting it so whatever is the number of elements i want to change divided by two right divided by two now just to take care of an extra case of even and odd what happens suppose i have um, five elements to be changed so how much time will i take one two three four five five elements so at one second these two second these two third these two so for five it is three seconds what is the case for four one two three four so one two so for four it is two right what i mean to say to generalize the formula in these cases this is a very common case to generalize this formula i can do something like this that whatever is the number of elements i want to change suppose that is x so that is x plus one by two to generalize it to to avoid the if else condition of uh, you know even and odd just try it out this is very easy okay so what i'll do these are the indices where one is present this and this suppose this this and this okay so between every two adjacent indices i'll see how many elements do i need to change right so between these two elements how much time do i take how much time do i take whatever the maximum time that i am taking that is the total time which i take to convert all the elements into that particular value like for example for one i'll have a set of indices for two i'll have a set of indices so i'll calculate the maximum time i take for this one how do i calculate between every pair of indices i calculate how many values do i need to change right now there is an edge case right there is an edge case and because of which i think most of the cases most of the people are failing right what is that edge case that edge case is this is a circular array right so yes my logic is correct this question is not that tough totally agree but the thing that is failing is suppose you the first index is here and the last index is here forget about the middle part okay now just see what is happening here just see what is happening there is also one distance that needs to be covered this part and this part getting it these two can be changed by this is a circular array right so i have considered every two adjacent uh, uh, you know what indices of a particular element but there are there is one more pair that is the first occurrence of a number first index where that number occurs and the last index where that number occurs right so one extra condition that i'll add is how many elements do i have at the starting right that means before the first index how many elements do i have at end that means after the last index so these total elements also needs to be covered so just consider this as well suppose this is x this is y so x plus y plus 1 by 2 also needs to be considered that's it and this problem is solved right how do we came up with this approach we came up with this approach because because we came up with this approach uh, because the constraint told us that okay i cannot run a big of n square loop right it will time out right but i have to deal with indices the main observation here was that every element at one step was changing it as uh, an element on its left and on its right right so why not con see how many seconds will i take if i consider all the elements between two indices so i expanded the solution between every pair of indices 
and the last case was what happens to the starting elements and the ending elements right so this is how i solved this problem the code is very easy this is the number of elements i have this is the maximum value uh, i assign my answer to the maximum value this is a map that i was telling you to create so just see if map doesn't contain the current value so insert a new list okay and insert the current index right so for this value these are the list of indices great now what are the distinct values just get the key set what are the indices for that particular value how many indices are there right so i've just taken some descriptive variables right um, now how many start elements are there it is index dot get zero simple suppose the first place where um you know index is coming is zero one two three four so if it that is index two that means i have two elements before me okay index zero i have zero elements before me how many ending elements are there it is n minus one minus the last index where it is coming again let's take an example so zero one two three four five so there are total six elements what is the last index it is six minus one that is five now if my last index is five how many elements do i need to cover at the end zero right so that is why it is n minus one minus the last index suppose the last index is actually three last index means where the current value has came right how many elements do i need to cover one two so what i do n minus 1 minus 3 so that is 5 minus 3 that is 2 so that is why n minus 1 minus the last index okay now current max so i initialize the current max value this current max is telling that if you try to make all the elements equals to the current value okay what's the number of time what's the number of uh, what's the unit of time you need right so start elements plus end elements plus 1 remember plus 1 by i told you to cover the even and odd case divided by 2 now this is to check for all the adjacent elements. So you check for all the adjacent elements. Just see, I'm checking for index i and index i minus 1 divided by 2. Simple. Now, right? Now you must be thinking why I have not added plus 1 here, right? So let me tell you the reason. By the way, just pause the video and give it a thought. And if you have thought about it, I'll tell you the reason. Because the number of elements that you have between i and j is j minus i minus 1. And what did I say? count of elements is x so do x plus 1 divided by 2 so this is the count of elements do plus 1 divided by 2 this this cancels out it becomes j minus i divided by 2 so that is why it is this minus this divided by 2 getting it and finally what you do you just update your answer and return the answer right that's it for this problem uh, i would say this this is a, a good problem because the array given was circular array but honestly speaking uh, the accuracy should not have been so low but uh, yeah it's a good problem to solve right because um, we are missing test cases so that's the most important thing you know uh, covering the edge cases right so yeah that's it for the solution um, i hope you learn something new from this video uh, do support it by giving up a thumbs up do subscribe to the channel as well in case you have any queries related to the solution uh, let me know in the comment section i'll revert on each one of them thank you take care bye bye